Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Staying safe. Taking care of yourself out there. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week on YouTube showing you how I edit my photos using different software products. Today I'm in Luminar 4, and this is a quick tip video for you. I um, trying to do more of these quick tips because a lot of my videos get kind of long because I'm doing workflow and things like that. So this one's going to be kind of straight to the point. Let's get into it. I've got a night shot. Here it is. I took this at Covent Garden in London. And I used to always shoot up and like I loved sunset and blue hour. And then once it started getting dark, I was like, I'm done. Um, but I'm not like that anymore. Over the last couple of years, I've done more and more night photography. Um, and I really have gotten to where I like it. But there's one thing I don't like about it. And by the way, I'm speaking about night photography in cities. Um, I've rarely gotten out uh, and, and done landscapes at night, like with Milky Way stuff. I did a little bit of that in Colorado this summer. I still need to make a video about that, in fact. But anyway, um, in cities, I used to kind of give up when darkness fell. And uh, like I said, I've kind of changed my tune. I've gotten to where I really appreciate and enjoy a city after dark. So I've got this photo here. The thing I don't like about it is cities always have these lights that give off all these kind of orangey yellow tones. You can see the sky. I mean, by the way, I have no edits yet to this photo um, other than a crop. But those orangey yellow tones, I just don't really like. They don't really look that great to me. So what I've often done in the past is, by the way, first thing I'd probably do is come in and add some contrast and take down the highlights here a bit. Uh, so it may be something about like that. But what I've historically done in the past is just a temperature change, right? So, um, and, the, and the blue works fine. The thing about adding um, or reducing the temperature or moving it to the left, whatever you want to call it, you know, cooling it off, is it kind of cools off everything. It's not... Um, it's not precise, it's just kind of global, right? Everything gets a little bit cooler, and you may not want that. And so there's a couple of different things you can do, and these are the things I've started to do more often with my night shots, is you hop over here to the Pro menu, and there's really two different things you can do. The first one, and I've done this in videos before, is split toning. It separates highlights from shadows, which is a, you know, a decent way to separate the light. The highlights, of course, are gonna be these bright white areas where the lights are really popping. But I would come in here and I would probably take saturation for the shadows. By the way, you gotta turn it on by moving the saturation slider slightly, and then you can adjust the hue. So I've got the hue like, you know, somewhere here in the blues. And then if you drag the saturation up, you know, you can get a little bit cooler looking photo. So if you look at the before, much more warm and kind of orangey yellow, and now bluer. And if you wanted to, I don't know that I would do much with the highlights in this photo, but you could also do some with the highlights. And there you go. I mean, you can make a big impact on the photo in just a quick moment with split toning. So there it is before and after. Now, that's the first thing I do. The second one, and I've taken to doing this more and more often, is actually using photo filter. So this allows you to basically pick a hue and then an amount and just slap that hue across the entire photo. So I can drag the amount. Now currently the hue is on red, so I want to get rid of that because I kind of want to go to blue. Um, and you're looking at it and you're like, Jim, that looks terrible. Go back to split toning, and it does. But if you click this and hit luminosity mask, it's going to create a luminosity mask for you based on those adjustments. Now, luminosity mask is applied based on light values. There you go. So what a light value is, of course, is the brighter parts are going to get more of the luminosity mask, and the darker parts are going to get less of it. So that's what the mask looks like. The higher concentration of reddish pink, the mask, is in these bright areas, and the lower concentration are in the dark areas. Well, that's actually not what I want. I want more in, I want it the other way around. So I just go to mask, invert. Now my mask looks like that. So more of this blue that I picked with photo filter is going into the sky and the building and very little at all. In fact, none are going in these bright white parts, which is actually what I want. So you go like that, hide it, and you can see the photo looks much better. That looks like a night shot to me. That does not. I just don't like those orangey yellow colors. I just don't like the way the lights look. Um, I love orange and yellow and red if I've got a sunset or a sunrise. But in city shots at night, I don't really like it. I like the bluer, cooler tones. That's a great way to do it. Now, I probably got a little too high concentration of photo filter, so I take that down a little bit. But the thing is, it's applying globally versus split toning is gonna be highlights and shadows. So you pick one or the other. I feel like you don't have quite as much control, whereas with the photo filter applied with the luminosity mask, it's going the darker and brighter. So the brighter parts, which are the highlights, if you notice, 
they're getting really none of this blue, which is really what I want. I kind of like the the brightness level. I just didn't like the color there um, and the way the photo was before. So there is before and after. And if I do a sliding scale, you can see it's um, it's real easy and real quick to have a massive impact on your photo. Now I might would go in and do other things to this photo, play around with it because I like to experiment and mess around and play around with photos. But that's a quick tip on a couple of different ways you can better manage temperature and color in your night shots taken in cities. Split toning works great. I would say my favorite really, at least right now, I kind of move around a little bit, um, you know, but um, photo filter is really my favorite tool for that right now because I can pick the color and then with the luminosity mask and then inverting it gives me the option to really more accurately control where it goes. And by the way, of course, you may know this, but if you have a mask and decide, yeah, it looks good in all those places, but not here or there, you just go in and click erase and erase it from wherever it is you don't want it. You can also increase, well, in this case, decrease the opacity from 100 to lower, so you could only erase it slightly in certain areas. Anyway, you have a lot of control, and that's another good reason why I use a luminosity mask, because if I need to come back and fine tune that, the luminosity mask help, the amount will help, of course, and um, if I come in with a brush and slightly erase it or paint it in, however I wanted to do it, it gives me that much additional control. So. Hopefully that helps, just a quick tip about controlling light and color, really more color, I guess I should say, and temperature, I guess is the best way of putting it. Um, controlling temperature in your uh, night shots, taken in cities. Hope it gives you some ideas and some things to experiment with in your own photos. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll catch you real soon. You guys have a great day. Take care and adios.